Hello guys, in the last video we uploaded the Gerber files for the new RC tractor boards to JLC PCB and I've just received the, the finished product so we're going to open them up and see how they turned out. So first thing you'll note is they've come in a nice little box here so they're well protected. We'll open them up, they're bubble wrapped inside as well so extra little piece of uh, protection for your new PCBs. You can see that each set of PCBs has come in a heat sealed bag and each bag has a silica gel pouch in it so that will prevent too much moisture in the in the bag and uh, prevent corrosion of your PCBs. So that's a pretty good way of packaging it. have a little description of what it is so that's tractor board 2 bottom that one's tractor board 2 top and it says it's 1.6 millimeter PCB and I don't know what any of the rest of it means but so far so good okay so here's the two boards that are basically what we need to control one of the RC tractors and um, this little one here has our Atmega chip on it and it is going to have header on the bottom that will plug into this one which has our motor driver and an expansion chip so it's slightly different from our other design but uh, hopefully it will work you can see that the pins on this one are going to line up with the pins on this one and the pins on the outside then there where the wires are going to be connected so hopefully that will work out all right okay so let's take a look at the uh, board with the controller on it first it's a little hard to film this because it's such a reflective surface but we'll do our best um, the PCB itself looks really nice in, in the blue. I think it's uh, turned out uh, very well. Um, you can see the traces very clearly when you get the light on. So it seems to have uh, turned out perfectly, exactly like what we wanted. So you can see our outline for our main Atmega chip there. The pads are nice and clear. There's uh, doesn't look to be much opportunity for a jumper to occur. There's good solder mask on all the traces. Um, the blue uh, board that we chose is a really nice colour. It looks great. It's a little hard to see it on the, the camera here with all the light reflecting on everything. But when you do get the shine, there you go. It's a nice kind of a rich blue colour. But all our pads, everything looks pretty perfect. There's nothing really to complain about. If we spin to the back here, even our little uh, icon there, our little logo, which was quite a small little um, picture to be trying to get printed. But even that has come out in pretty good detail. Like you can tell that is the Ford TW35 that we're using the logo. That's very clear. Uh, I positioned it poorly there we have a pin running through the middle of the uh, rctractorguide.com but you can see the text at the top is pretty clear again it's very very small text that I was trying to write with and they seem to have managed it pretty perfectly you can see there I obviously got the silk screen wrong because that is the outline for the uh, the little crystal there that goes in that slot so I managed to get the outline on the bottom. Now that won't be their fault. That's something I done wrong. But other than that it looks good. You can see at the pins there. There's no jumpers between the pins. Even though they're quite small. They're perfectly outlined there. They're still going to be challenging to solder. But there is a clear gap between the two pins there. So there's no mistakes made there. So that board, as far as I'm concerned, is ideal for what we want. If we look at the second board here, this is the one that's going to have the expansion chip and the motor driver. And it is basically a shield for the other little board. And everything's pretty much turned out exactly like we wanted it, same as the other one. Uh, the pads are clear, the pin... Uh, the true hole pins there are uh, perfectly clear as well there's no jumpers or solder bridges there's no traces or pads that look a bit dodgy everything is perfectly uh, 
milled and looks pretty good. The logo is even better on this one because I don't have pins going through it like I did on the other. You can see our little logo just come out perfectly clear. I'm very happy with how the logo came out. And I put this little thing here to say RCTG2. So that's RC Tractor Guy 2. Looks pretty perfect. There's not much else I can say about it. So just for comparison, here is the last board. So you can see the chip is here. That is now on this board. Uh, the expansion chip and the motor driver. Expansion chip and motor driver. So we've basically confined everything into a slightly shorter package but it'll be taller obviously because the, the boards are going to be stacked so that looks all right but just if you notice on this one the text is too small it's quite broken up kind of hard to see it's not very clear on there like when it's maybe hard to see on the camera but in reality it's quite hard to see what's actually written on most of the little pieces here now the text is all right there um, and it's okay there but at the same time it's not just perfect and that was probably my fault I would have uh, put the text too small probably on here you can see where we v-scored up the side of the pins and it cut through the pins so that was no good um, that's why in the new one you'll notice that unlike this one where it cut off all the pins here this one there's a nice little border around it and it's quite clear there's nothing going to be uh, damaged there in some of these like, the V scoring could have joined those pins that maybe you didn't want like these ones you don't want them joined but the cutting simply could have just bent the contacts together and made them connect but that is the difference with our little boards if anyone's wondering what the text is in here this will be the little code that they put on the board so that they know this is this particular batch and probably if you went back and looked at the video or did I actually upload the thing in this video not sure but um, that is probably the code for the order that I placed so I would say you'd have to be quite happy with the results of that. Uh, the boards were very cheap, only a couple of dollars for uh, 10 of each. And they've turned out perfectly as far as I can see. In the next video I'll solder up the components onto them. I'll probably do one video for this one and then test it out in the video. So all we'll have to do is get the chip on it, give it a bit of power. Uh, we'll solder on a NRF module. So in case you weren't aware the NRF module goes on the back of this board and you can see the contacts there which line up with the contacts on the NRF board. So it could be this way around, I'm not exactly sure which way I have it uh, set up but uh, you know you just make sure that's right when you're doing it. One thing I'm noticing, I might have put the pins here a little bit too close to this board so quite possibly I'll have to put the female header on the top of this board and plug this one onto that in exactly the same way you would do with an Arduino uh, an Arduino shield. Actually that would probably work out a little bit better for the radio because then your radio isn't sandwiched in between the two boards. Actually now that I think of it, uh, it's definitely that way because that leaves the ground plane of the NRF module which ends just there at the top of that bit of solder lining up with the ground plane of the bottom board that's the way I intended it to work so to just give the antenna a slightly bigger ground plane or at least that was my plan and I think that'll probably work so if I make this one the lower board that means the NRF has a better chance of or the antenna has a better chance of radiating that signal so I think that'll work pretty good that also benefits us because if we have the female header here then to test it all we have to do is plug in our pins into the header. That also works out better for the next video because if uh, the female header is on this one all we have to do is plug the wires into the header to test it so it's pretty good. And here is a little bit of the header so it will just slot in there and well you'll just cut a bit to the right size obviously but it will slot in there and we can plug our wires in the top. 
Well, that's our new RC tractor control boards. Uh, big thanks to JLC PCB for making the boards and sending them into us. Uh, as you can see, it's a very, very simple process. You just, once you have your files, it was only about five minutes work to upload the files, select the settings, and then we have the PCBs a couple of days later. It's uh, pretty ideal. It only costs us a couple of dollars as well. So it's really so cheap, there's no excuse not to be uh, giving it a go if you plan to make any sort of a, a circuit board at all. I mean, you probably spend as much buying proto board and uh, soldering all the jumpers as you would just designing it in the free software and getting a proper PCB made. It'd certainly save you a lot of time in soldering anyway. That's all I have to say about the PCBs. If you decide to go and get your own boards made, make sure and post them on the Facebook page or something so we can see how your boards turned out as well. And like I say, next video we'll be making up this board, so I hope to see you in that one. Thanks very much for watching.